Cheers. I'm Angie and I'm Whitney and today we're going to talk to you about Scarborough's reading rope and explain it and hopefully we'll be able to apply it a little bit. That's right. And I don't know about you but I see it all over the place now which yeah. is good. Yeah. So we just want to explain it. Yeah. So it starts with background knowledge and we build background knowledge and we can activate background knowledge. Students come with background knowledge. So we always want to begin any literacy lesson, any lesson really, by activating the background knowledge they already have. And at times we need to build it. Yeah. Uh, the next is vocabulary. So sometimes we need to explicitly teach vocabulary because it has huge impacts on comprehension. Are they understanding what they're reading? They, in order to, one of those things is vocabulary. They have yeah. to know what words mean. So we teach them. Yeah, exactly. And then once we know the words, we get down to the next two places in the rope, language structures and verbal reasoning. And those two really combine into what we know or think of as comprehension. In our language structures, we're looking at things that we see. What do we see on the page? the syntax, the semantics, down to the word level or at the sentence level or in the context of what we're reading. What are we seeing and how does that affect our comprehension? Then the verbal reasoning, that's really what are we thinking about as we're reading. And this is also where our oral language comes into play. The higher our oral language knowledge is, the better our verbal reasoning can be as well. So we're, are we able to make inferences and fill in the gaps? Mm -hmm. Can we use metaphors and, and different language structures that are basically built orally, but yet they affect our written knowledge? So these verbal reasoning and language structures come together and are really the comprehension of text. So those together are huge. Then we go into literacy knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so think of early literacy skills. What are we teaching in preschool, kindergarten, first grade? We're teaching how to book, right? We're teaching mm -hmm. this is a page. This is how we turn the page. Here's how sentences are written. I mean, there's so many things to cover to just know how to use text, yeah. how to read. So, and then we can get into genres. Mm -hmm. Anything else with? Yeah, it can go into even in the upper grades, text features. Yeah. And we have, you know, lots of different structures of text and all sorts of things that we can think about with liter literacy knowledge. Yeah, as text gets more complex, the structure may change mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things like that. So it exactly. needs to be taught. It does, exactly. So the top piece of the rope, you can see how that, a lot of it is, it's really sort of abstract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Deep thinking. Yeah. Hard to teach because you, yeah, you can't just grasp it sometimes. But very important to teach. So the bottom part of the rope is our word recognition part. Now, just because they're separate pieces, separate ropes coming together, pieces coming together, yeah, yeah, don't ever begin to think that that means they're taught separately. They are separate skills, and we can explicitly teach them individually, but they should come together in application at the end of every lesson. So when we move to word recognition, we, we understand what these things are, but we don't want to focus on just word recognition. Mm -hmm. Same with language comprehension. We know what those are. We don't want to focus on just those either. We really need the whole rope. And that's why I love when we state objectives with our classes. Uh, good readers, blank, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever we're explicitly, explicitly teaching and always connect to. We do this to understand what we read. Yeah. We do this to be a skilled reader yeah. because that is why... We're doing that. Yeah. And so this part under word recognition, all of the, these things need to be connected to why we're doing this yeah. and that connection, that application. Yeah. 
So we start out here with phonological awareness and many of us, most of us know what our, the skills are here. Mm -hmm. um, they have all of the different levels of syllable, syllable, onset rhyme, word, all the levels. Phonemic awareness is the strongest piece or element that is found to improve or lead to skilled reading. So we want to make sure that we do teach phonological awareness. Then we have decoding. Which gives us phonics. So, mm -hmm. And interesting enough that an effective phonics lesson should always start with a piece of phonemic awareness. So yeah. you're connecting those together because, I mean, hence the name of phonics, sound spelling, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> connecting the sounds and their spellings and learning how to blend and decode. Yeah. So super important, but yet not the only piece of a skilled reader. Yeah. And also within that decoding, you have, you said sound spelling. We also have the graphemes. We have the alphabetic principles. So yeah. the letters and their names so we have the names, the sounds, and the, the relationship of those together. Starts as simple as that and yeah. gets a, it gets more complex. Yeah, it really does. All the way up to multisyllabic word reading. Mm -hmm. And then the last strand of that bottom part of the rope is sight recognition. As we become great decoders, we just can read words. Yeah. We just have them. We just know them. We see them and we read them. And so that's automaticity. We want that of our readers. We want every word to become automatic. But if they aren't automatic, they can rely on good decoding skills to be able to decode those words. So that's why decoding needs to be in place. But also within sight recognition, we do have some irregular words. We sure do. So we have to have some strategies and ways of teaching those irregular words or how to deal with them when they come to them. Mm -hmm. So there's the two sides of the rope. Now I want to talk about what happens as they come together as they cross over. Right where they cross over, that's the connecting part where they where they cross together and start to braid. That's where we begin to have prosodic reading. That's where prosody begins to happen. And it starts to sound nice. And you hear them reading and, and their comprehension and their decoding comes together and it starts to sound like, oh, hey, that's good reading. I like the way that sounds. And so that's where prosody starts to happen. And we do teach prosody. So we teach them, all right, you're a great decoder and you're understanding your text. So you know where to pause and you know where to change your voice. Now let's put it all together and have it sound really well. I mean, that's beautiful to think of all these pieces within language and word recognition yeah. that just, and when they start to weave, that's fluency, that's prosody. Yeah. That's where we sound natural because yeah. we're understanding and we can read eff effortlessly. So. Yeah. And then as the rope gets tighter and tighter, we have a visual of rate. Mm -hmm. It gets faster and faster. It's an outcome. We don't teach rate. Rate isn't one of the pieces of the rope. Rate is the outcome of that weave becoming tighter. Yeah. It's the outcome of all the work we've done all the teaching that's happened. Yeah, and that's why there's norms of what is appropriate rate for yeah. an age of a child. So You can almost picture yourself poking into that rope along the way. Poke, yeah. are we there yet? Yeah. Poke, are we there yet? Poke, are we tight? Are we on that rope? Are we tight? Mm -hmm. <laughs> One thing I thought of was this rope may allude to, oh, there's an end. Oh, they yeah. become a skilled reader when really, no, because what happens, text increases its complexity. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's a job for literacy teachers to always be teaching these strands of the rope because complexity of text increases. Yes. 
Yeah. And you'll get to a point where students, they don't understand some words yeah. or they can't decode them or they don't have the background knowledge needed. And so that rope loosens up or a strand loosens up. And so you have to explicitly teach to put it back together nice and tight. Yeah, such a good visual that connects mm. to the components of reading yeah. so well. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's a great visual for me to remember how to teach and what's effective in teaching reading and liters and literacy. Yeah. And it's it's a foundation of the science of reading and it's been around got to get me the the date. I can't believe it's not in my head right now. Yeah, that's okay. We'll yeah. pop it here. Yeah. <laughs> And we'll make sure to give you more information and ways to apply all of the parts of the reading rope. Always. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks for watching our reading rope video. If you have any questions, leave them for us. And we will connect this video to some other videos. So check out the links down below. Follow us on, we're on lots of things, yeah. Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and make sure you're sub subscribed to our YouTube channel. Thanks. Simply, Simply teach. teach.